What's going on, everybody? Welcome in to the Tuesday, February 20th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand-Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, shocking development. Biden plans to roll back des- uh, rule designed to juice EV push on the country. That is a shocker. Next up, why Toyota may have the best strategy in the EV race. Hint, it's not EVs. Next up, the boom in battery metals for EVs is turning into a bust. And finally, electric vehicles are so unpopular that the entire mines are shutting down. That finishes the EV thread to begin it. We'll then finish with two more stories charting the course of U.S. oil production. And finally, a ban on LNG exports could boost carbon emissions. We love that. It's a joke. Um, Stu will then toss it over to me, and then I will quickly cover what happened in the oil and gas markets today. Pretty quiet as the markets, um, overall financial markets were closed. So just a few different uh, topics to cover before a big week of M&A. But as always, I'm Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Kick us off, my man. Hey, let's start around here with our buddy Biden. A shocking development. Biden plans to roll out back rule design to juice EV push on the country. And our picture of, I'm going to just leave that alone, but he's hanging out of his head and he can't even drive. The Biden administration is planning to slow down the rollout of a rule that was designed to juice the United States transition to electric vehicles. Michael, this is uh, very much, do you remember um, the prime minister of the UK took a beating because he did the same thing. The EPA just rolled this out. The new car rule last year would require nearly 70% of new car and truck sales to have no tailpipe emissions by uh, 2032. Mm -hmm. But critics claim the sudden shift would devastate the U.S. auto industry. So they're going to give them a reprieve by a couple years, um, Michael. And I think that This is going to be a little bit of a black eye. We know that they're uh, pandering to the climate activists, and this is going to be a a big problem. They can say, oh, we're not quitting, but we are pushing it out because of the EV failures. Yeah, well, it's it's funny how they wait a year too long to roll out with stuff it's it's sometimes like a little too little too late unfortunately because you've still got california going full stream steam ahead with their with their plans which yes as on a countrywide it doesn't matter but you still have the individual states which we're all in in favor of state power here there are 17 states that have added legislation michael that says anything california does they can be as stupid Mm-hmm. So, so goes California. So goes seventeen stupid states. Now, so let's this is go just, to the next. This, but you have to remember, this was just a leak of a potential announcement. They haven't said anything yet. Oh, they're they they. This was a flag yep. to throw out there to see how bad it got. And I guarantee you, they're going to have to because the unions, uh, the one union boss that is out there, is costing a lot of jobs out there and he's got to do something to appease them and realize that and the next uh three stories are going to really kind of add into this let's go to toyota michael i'm going to brag on me and you here for half a sec why toyota may have the best strategy in the ev race you and i have been on this for quite a while and that is why are we not putting evs i mean uh secondary and i Again, I love Elon. I love what Elon's doing. And why don't we just go to the Toyota hybrid model? Uh, Let's go through some of the numbers in here. Uh, The four quarters, Tesla's generated total revenue and earnings of $96 billion and $15 billion uh, for, uh, respectively, for Toyota. Uh, Toyota's revenue roughly three times larger. Oh, excuse me, at two hundred and ninety nine billion and forty four billion uh, of profits. Uh, but yet Tesla's market cap is more than double that of Toyota. 
and that's because of the carbon credits and and everything else in there. Mm -hmm. So well, it's it's extremely fascinating why Tesla trades at such a multiple relative to the other car makers. You know, one would say, right. I I would say it's a lot to do with they were a tech company masquerading as a you know they're a, they're they. they, they they're trying to brand themselves as a tech company when they're really a car company. The problem is they really are a tech company with autopilot and a lot of the stuff they're doing on the software space. I don't have a problem with valuing Tesla higher than I do other automakers because if they figure out autopilot and are able to license that software to other companies, they will far and away become larger than the physical automakers. Now, they also come out with really cool cars. It is interesting. The mo And this is where comparing comps becomes a tricky issue. We saw right. this in in, uh, in in a soon-to-be-released um, deal spotlight with John Farrell. We, 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 we highlighted the difference of the multiples between Pioneer, what Pioneer got and, uh, for, from uh, being bought by Exxon and what... Um, Diamondback paid for Endeavor, but it's hard to compare them because there's so much extraneous stuff around it that multiples don't necessarily make sense. Being able to pick comparable companies to say this is a comparable transaction, therefore this is how much I should be valued is tricky. Should you look at Toyota like Tesla? No, in fact, they're two different businesses that may not have any relation with each other except for the fact that they build cars. Uh, here's uh, two big things, uh, takeaways out of this article, Michael. EV drawbacks. Um, Kelly Blue Book uh, claims the five-year cost to own an EV versus uh, ICE vehicles is 15% higher. I disagree because I think it's the insurance is just now starting to go through the roof on this. Uh, you take EVs lose an average of 43515 in value. Ice uh, internal combustion engines depreciate uh, by twenty seven thousand eight hundred and eighty three. So um, uh, then you have the batteries are less efficient and, and those kind of things. But um, the the obvious benefit is fuel costs. The, the EV owners will save approximately five thousand in gas. But that's going to be made up in insurance very easily in a year and a half. <laughs> yeah. Part of why, you know, Tesla, you know, I, I, if we can scroll down here in the, the fundamentals chart, um, we can throw up here, Miss Producer, you'll see on you'll see really key into that growth area. You talk about revenue growth one year, Tesla at 18, Toyota at 10. Revenue oh, yeah, growth there it over is. five years, 33 percent relative to only 1.1 for Toyota. So where Toyota, where Toyota is eating it really is the fact that they over a five year span, they have not necessarily grown revenue and 1.1 and percentage points is a rounding error. So from a percent of how much they're growing, the growth theoretically is probably being looked at by Toyota as cap. Now the problem is if they do if hybrids do become the thing of the future they're poised to be on top of that so this is also we're coming down to where do you think the market is going and applying that future market to the current fundamentals of either of these companies and that'll give you a pathway to uh, valuation let me throw this at you just a little bit and that is ford ford is having to <laughs> uh ford is having to retool you're having the unions, they're shutting down their plants. Let's take uh, uh, the deindustrialization of Germany. All of the EV plants are backing off and closing down. You have your parts, and then the other stories are coming in about the mining and everything else. Toyota is not having any of those expenses. So that you take a, take a look at in the next two years, Toyota is going to springboard. Boink. It's going to go right on through the roof. Well, we'll so, see. You heard it here second, Michael. Let's go to the boom in the battery. Boom in the battery metals for EVs is turning to bust. Uh, I found this uh, article fairly uh, interesting. When we sit back and take a look at um, everybody was fighting over, uh, I think it's 80%, Michael, of the 
uh, critical minerals can be refined or refined in China. Mm -hmm. So you may be able to be digging them up around the world, but it is uh, where the technology resides is in China. So you got to ship them to China and then have them refined and then made every other areas. So let's go to uh, nickel uh, boom and bust cycles for nickel uh not just as fast and sharply lower metal prices could help automotive companies reignite sales growth by luring by it with cheaper models and discounts you and i talked about this yesterday with the chinese invasion of the uh cheaper models mm -hmm. uh that they were really trying to bring in here so um this is going into the economics is the last paragraph down there uh, aren't there until uh, recently American lithium giant uh, Albermare uh, was riding high. Now its shares are down 57%, Michael, from a year ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, as you said, we've also seen things like Glencore, BHP. They've gone ahead and said they're going to shutter their nickel businesses because it's just unprofitable. These projects can't quite ramp up. You know, and, and this is what's funny is we need to ramp up this volume if we're moving to EV. So there seems to be a shift. Now, the problem is, as we covered last week, no one's buying the EV. So you're just putting this metal into cars. And if people are going to stop, if manufacturers are going to start making EVs, then you don't need any of this. So the, the EV market is, 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 is teetering right now. It is. And, and here's the other thing about this is the second order of magnitude about this energy thread that we're talking about today is from the standpoint of the renewable, the critical minerals that are needed for it, the prices are going to go up because if they, they are in demand mm -hmm. or uh, there's less mining going on, you're going to see the, the there's less mining available for a larger uh, push for grid updates or other things. So the entire renewable uh energy transition as they call it is in peril yep so let's go to this other article is electric vehicles are so unpopular entire mines are shutting down uh this one is very uh, much in the same line china controls the 87 percent of the rare earth mineral refining capacity i already talked about that one mm -hmm. so let's go ahead and go down over to charting the course of U.S. oil production. We did go ahead and cover some of this uh, already. I wanted to bring that up in the, in the standpoint that uh, not only is King, uh, King Coal going to be around, King Oil is going to be around as well, too. Yep. And so you take a look at the uh, daily crude production, 11.94 uh, million of barrels for the uh, U.S. oil. Um, tracking indicators like the Fred frac spread count and global economic conditions is crucial for understanding U.S. oil production trends. Mm -hmm. Michael, I do want to ask this question, and that is, we know that technology in the EMP space is doing better. So mm -hmm. we're doing more drilling with less rigs, but do you think that there's too much pr uh, dollar put on the number of rigs that are running when they're trying to price out oil? I guess I'm a little confused in your question. Are you just saying it's, it's not cost effective to drill new wells? Oh no. Uh, it's, there are less, um, uh, less rigs running. Yep. And we are but we're getting the same more. amount of efficiency, absolutely. And and so there's actually better efficiencies. But why uh, are we using getting the more, new why, the word efficient may be the wrong word? Why are we seeing more production with less rigs? Is that because we're finding better wells, or we're just now drilling three mile long laterals? So one rig is now instead of drilling a one mile or a two mile lateral, is on a three mile lateral. What they're right. doing up in Colorado is they're drilling U wells. They come in. They drill down one formation, they go deeper, then they turn around and you're basically drilling, you know, four mile laterals because of the way you U-shape it. So there is a little bit of 
we actually probably per foot on an EUR basis are seeing less efficient wells, uh, but we're drilling longer wells, which means we can get the same amount of production from less rigs. But as you mentioned, it's so you, you, you there. It, it's a little bit see, of uh, it's a play. And I wasn't even thinking of that. I, I mean, I honestly, I, I that did not make sense to me uh, on that at all. That's pretty darn cool, dude. Now, the frack spread count is a key indicator of how much available capacity do we have to bring on new production? Because most right. wells, you can't just drill, pull tools out of the hole and we, you start seeing oil. Most you got to frack these bad boys. It'd be nice, but those have all been drilled up. So with only about, you know, with 75% so, of the equipment currently in use, what does that mean? That means there's only incrementally maybe 20, you know, maybe 15% more that could be, you know, more equipment being used. What is that relative to new right. production versus old production falling offline? It's a completely hairy beast, but the, the more frack spread, you know, the, the smaller that frack spread is, excuse me, is the, is an indicator of how quickly production can be ramped up. I like that. I, I was not even thinking that way. See, that's you're the boots on the ground and I'm the boots in the cloud. So, hey, you got to like gotta that. pull it off. Uh, hey, let's go to the ban on LNG exports could boost carbon emissions. Um, this is just absolutely pathetic when you actually sit back and uh, President Biden, this is in the third paragraph down or uh, fourth paragraph. President Biden announced a temporary pause on pending approvals of liquefied natural gas exports. Um, this announcement comes on the heels of news that 2023 surpassed uh, Qatar and Australia had become the world's uh, two largest LNG uh, export. Now, Here's where this goes in. How it could is if we go through the single biggest reason for this decline was natural gas. Oh, displacing coal production in 2007. Coal had more than a 40% share of all power production, while natural gas only held a 20%. By 2022, coal had been given displaced by natural gas. Uh, coal had fallen to 20% and the natural gas had increased to 40. They flipped in those uh, years from 2027 uh, or 2007 to 2022, they'd flipped. That's nuts. Yeah. I mean, I, I think this, this ban on LNG is, is, is probably, it's a temporary pause. What does that mean? They may or may not be able to reverse it. Um, it's stupid. It's placating his base. Yep. And, it and it's, is it's weaponizing something for, you know, if, if this wasn't a, 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 this, if this wasn't a voting season, we didn't have to show up to the ballot box in November. You may or you probably don't see this happen. In my opinion, I think this, they're weaponizing the energy industry because they feel like it's the one thing they, 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 they may be able to, to win over independence on. And I think it's despicable. Uh, and and, and it, the, the second order magnif mag magnitude on this is I would not want to do business with the U.S. because all of a sudden Biden said a year ago, uh, oh, I will give you all the LNG you want. Not today. I, now he's the LNG soup Nazi of yeah. Seinfeld. No soup. <laughs> No LNG no, no, for you. No LNG for you. <laughs> you got anything else? Nah, I had a real roll on a thread today. Absolutely. Um, before we jump over to finance quickly, we'll go ahead and pay the bills here. Um, as always, guys, the news and analysis uh, that you're hearing is brought to you by the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all of your uh, energy and oil and gas news doing the team do a tremendous job making sure this website is up to speed everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy business hit the description below go ahead and um 
find links to all of the articles that you just heard, uh, uh, links to our website, links to those articles, um, links to the transcripts. You can also check us out, dashboard.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your data and news combo. A lot of great stuff coming here. Um, end of Q1, beginning of Q2 for for uh, the Energy Newsbeat. So very excited about that. Um, but let's go ahead and move on over into oil Um into the oil markets. I mean, overall markets were closed today, guys. It's President's Day, so we saw nothing really change. Um, uh, we did see futures stay basically flat for both the S&P 500 and NASDAQ. Um, we did see crude oil drop it, then gain a little bit. I mean, again, everything right now that you're seeing, specifically with the overall markets closed, close had a lot to do with what's going on geopolitically and you can see people are swinging back and forth you know in in in, in a smaller session um than normal considering it's a uh, it's a holiday here US President's Day um you know there's a lot of you know what we would say thinner volumes um and that mainly means that volume precedes price. So if you have low volume, price doesn't move that much. So when when you hear somebody talk about there was thin volume on the markets today, that's a code word for nobody was trading, and that means prices <laughs> didn't do much. We seesawed a little bit. Um, you know, we did see the settle um, for West Texas Intermediate seventy nine forty nine. That's up still by about thirty cents. So not horrible. Um, you know, the 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 uh, delivery for the April contract was down to, to seventy eight. Uh, 35, you know, um, mainly what, you know, the, the, the Middle East, the, the conflict there between Israel and Gaza continues to kind of claim a lot of what's going on with the swing of the oil markets. We also did see uh, some Houthis over in Yemen claim responsibility for attack on an India bound oil tanker. Um, so, uh, you know, and, hey, they're going after another everybody. cargo ship and they had to abandon the cargo ship. Yep. Wow. Um, the terrorism and what is it? Abandoned faith. All oh, ye. What is it? What is that? Oh, what is that classic pirate phrase where it's like abandon hope? Ye uh, yeah. who something like that. Oh, I don't know. I was just thinking of Hootie and the Blowfish, you know, some of their songs. So I don't know. You and I are on different wavelengths today. <laughs> We are um, not much happened day again, guys, with the markets being closed. We did not see any earnings. We are going to see a, a boatload rollout over the next few days. So go ahead and stay with us. But I'm going to let us out early because hey, why keep us if we've got uh, if there was no markets closed? We, uh, you'll see today the API in the afternoon will go ahead and announce its uh, its crude oil inventory stock. So check out that. Um, and we will also um, hopefully see an update on um um, in the next couple of weeks, we are going to see really what happens uh, to the Fed, given the fallout from uh, both CPI and the, and the producer price index being hey, up. Hey, Michael, um, I, I do want to ask folks to get in touch with us, because when you and I started what three years ago or whenever it was, uh, we did the old regime, the regime. Uh, we had live uh, shows that got to huge uh, and I just want to see if everybody wants us to go back to live. So give us some feedback. Uh, we want to know uh, what your thoughts are since we have so many beloved fans. Live would be interesting. I, I do. Luckily, we we mainly do this in one take, except for sometimes the intros. Um, takes a, it takes what, me one or two I, times. For our inside baseball, it's when HR or Michael does not like my jokes. <laughs> usually, usually. And that's the problem with live, Stu. We're going to have to hold you back a little bit. You get saved by the editing now. You get saved by the editing. <laughs> So, all right, guys, <laughs> we'll let you get out of here. Leave us some feedback. Email the show questions at energynewsbeat.com. For Stuart Turley, I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. <laughs>